Uh, it's funny to see photos of myself back when I had a haircut. <laughs> All right, and we are live. Awesome. You are now tuned in to Mind, Body, and Soul with Annette, where your host, Annette Harris, analyze intriguing life questions and concerns, such as, do Christians suffer from mental illness? Have you wondered why they act abnormal? Or you may ask, what is really going on in their minds? Do you need an act? Well, keep listening for a biblical understanding of the psychology of the mind. Hey, 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 guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another wonderful session of Mind, Body, and Soul with Annette. And I am your host, Annette Harris. So thank you so much for joining us on this afternoon for watching and or listening. Listen, I'm so excited about today's session. Uh, it is uh, going to be off the charts. <laughs> I'm going to say that right now. Uh, but before I get started, you all know that I had, must acknowledge the Lord in prayer. And I also have to thank God for what he's doing already. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day, how you blessed us to see it. We thank you that we are still here to see it. We ask that you would get the glory out of this session in the name of Jesus, whatever we go to do and whatever we say, we pray that it will be an inspiration to others as they watch and view on this afternoon. In Jesus' name we pray. And the opening scripture is the first part of Hosea 4 and 6. And it states, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. And again, I'm excited to be here. You all know every Wednesday I get excited. I really do. I love what I do. I really do. So um, it, it's a joy to come um, amongst all of you. And to hear from various guests and all that they are doing um, in the kingdom and um, those things that they are doing to inspire others. So um, if you can see, I have a wonderful guest here with me on this afternoon, a young man, if you will. And uh, we, are, we are going to introduce, let me see if I can pull up this, this bio that he gave me. But uh, in the meanwhile, let me and just ask him, uh, oh my goodness, you know what I was about to say, don't you? Fred, I'm, how are you doing on today? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. Good, good. You're looking good, son. You're looking good. Appreciate and, that. Appreciate uh, that. I, I'm only laughing. He knows what I'm laughing about because I, I have, I, I keep wanting to refer to something else and I have to make sure what I'm saying here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, some people don't know that I go by my middle name sometimes. Okay, and, and you know what? It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I have a Fred Walls of Fred Walls Media is a photographer and a videographer living in Chicago, Illinois. Um, over the course of three years, hmm, that's interesting. He's taken his love um, from a side hustle to a full-time gig. I, I love that. Although he is a workaholic, Mm. He seeks to find a balance of work and play in every day. Uh, it also says when he isn't working, he tries to spend time with his family or recharging at the gym. Okay, go for it, go for it. And it also says uh, he believes that his never ending sense of curiosity has led him on a search for a better him every single day. And welcome again to my body and soul, my good friend here, my laughing buddy, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Fred Walls. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. Oh, it really yeah. is good to be here, honestly. Well, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad that you're saying that because I wouldn't want you to, to not be happy to be here. <laughs> no, actually, I don't want to be here. I'm being held right? hostage. Uh, <laughs> and that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> but you know what though I and you know and we may end up laughing uh, at some point during this show because uh, we were just talking right before the show everyone about um, one of the first times that he and I met and I had known of him and by the way you all know that this is my good girl Brandy's son her oldest son um, so um, we we met. I think it was was your grandmother's. Was she being honored? Was that was that the event? My grandma was being honored, and also uh, final melody. Final melody was being honored. Right. That's yeah. right. That's right. Thank you. And I sat next to him in the um, at at this nice uh, event. It was I think it was at um, what was it? 
Oh goodness, the location. Uh, was it the DeSalvo Museum? Yes, thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a little younger, so you know you just gotta help me. I'm <laughs> <laughs> and I sat next to him, and there was something that was said. Somebody on the stage said something, and I just bust out laughing. And I said, "Oh my God, he is hilarious!" And he continued that same in that same vein for the rest of the night. <laughs> and I said, "He is hilarious. I love him. I love him." But he's oh, got a great right. sense of humor. Um, he's a he is just like his bio said, a very curious um, individual. He's a hard worker, workaholic, if you will. Hmm, I wonder where he gets that from. Anyway, um, <laughs> but I will say this before I move further. I must I must say this, Josh. I think you're on here, Josh. You you inspired your brother being on my show today, and you don't even realize it. Um, was about maybe a few weeks ago, Josh and, um, oh God, his, one of the other Final Melody members, they did, uh, Robert. The Disney. Oh, the, oh, the Disney thing. The Disney thing. Yes. They did the Di Disney thing on Facebook and it was nice, really nice. They went through and sang all the songs. And so then Josh said, uh, Josh said, okay, my, my brother's going to come on. And he said, and then he started talking about Fred Walls Media. He said, <laughs> You all check him out. He doesn't really get the pub that he really deserves. Light bulb went off. <laughs> That's where it happened. And I said, you know what? He's right. And I think actually you said at the moment, yeah, you're right. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he's going to say it, I might as well like, you know, affirm that. Like he's exactly. right. He's right. Y'all sleeping on me. Y'all sleeping. Right, right. So what? Uh, so then I said, okay. And so then I reached out to you. It might have been the same night I reached out to you. But um, I'm so glad that you accepted and you, you, you considered to come on with me on today because um, I do want to talk to you about a few things on today. I, I, maybe we should start with your company because I do want others to know about you. And I'm going to ask, I don't know if your mom is on or somebody um, to make sure that they put in your information. Um, and I do see you guys coming on here. Thank you guys so much for joining us on today to make sure they put in your information, how, where to find you. I don't know if you're able to do that while we're talking or not. Um, but let's, we, we're, gonna, we're gonna start chatting about Fred Walls Media. Um, Brandy, I see you on. I see you, Demetria Brand Triplett, Joe McCord. Hey, Joe, Josh, uh, Alan Laguerre. I believe I pronounced that right. Apostle Miles. Uh, Ty is on. Hey, Ty. Buddy Gill, thanks for watching. Brandy said, that's my baby. Yes. He's a, he's a big baby, though. Okay. <laughs> yeah, a little bit bigger. Uh, right. <laughs> Apostle Miles said he's handsome and has an anointed voice. You know, you're right. Oh, thanks for reminding me, Apostle Miles. I got to tell you something else about, about Mr. Fred also. Um, let's see. Kamitra says, someone, thanks for watching. Pastor CC is on. And who else? Karen, thank you for watching. So all of you guys that are here, make sure you, if you haven't done so already, I see you, Robin. Thanks for coming in. Go ahead, click the share button, click the like button, click the hearts. I think there's a care button on there as well. I want to see all the positive uh, emojis on today. Now, of course, if we laugh, whatever, you can go ahead and throw in the laughing one. Um, how are you, Samantha? Thanks for watching. Uh, we appreciate all of you on today. Go ahead and click the share button so everybody would know that My Body and Soul is on and that we're hosting Mr. Fred Walls on today. Um, um, if you're a millennial, if you are the parent of a millennial, uh, whoever of your business uh, owner, small business owner, um, please make sure you tag someone on today. Um, I think we're going we're gonna to have a great session on today and learn a lot of stuff. Um, real quick before we get to talking about Fred Walls Media, I recall, and it had to have been, oh, because my cousin, she is maybe a sophomore, junior in high school now. When she was in grammar school, I went to a play that she was in. And it was, was it Annie? Yeah. It was it's Annie. Uh -huh. And it was out in the south suburbs. And this tall, dark guy comes out and he's singing and he, and that voice. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, wow. course, I enjoyed the entire play, but I was very impressed by this young man's performance. 
And I did not, I didn't, I had known anything about a Brandy or a Fred Walls or anyone at that point, because that was oh. years ago. Mm. And I look and I'm so impressed. So then maybe fast forward some years later after I met your mom and she and I were talking one day and I said, wait a minute. I said, does Fred, does he perform? Is he an actor as well? And she said, well, he's performed a lot of, you know, I said, wait a minute, that was him <laughs> and Annie. And that, that's wow. so wild how things just come together. And wow, I was that's like, crazy. oh my goodness. That, that was, was crazy. Out. But I was so impressed with your performance. I really was. Thank you. Um, great voice. And I, so I agree with you, Apostle Miles, for saying that. Great voice. Um, I see you, Lou. Uh, thanks for watching. And Jeannie Palmer, we appreciate you. Make sure you guys uh, share, like and share, love and share. Uh, we would appreciate that on today. Um, if my assistant is on, let me know if you share to any um, groups for me so that um, I won't double share. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about Fred Walls Media. Um, what, is, what is Fred Walls Media, first and foremost, and just give us a little bit of background about it? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I, Fred Walls Media is Fred Walls Making Media. Um, I am a photographer. I am a videographer. Um, I do portrait photography, I've done some product photography, events, weddings, um, headshots. Uh, I've also done some food photography. Um, and then videos, mostly like marketing and promotional videos. Um, so my, my clients for those are typically like small to midsize, some large like businesses, um, you know, making a video for, you know, a company that like makes steel or uh, making a video for uh, one of my clients makes um, uh, uh, like towels that are like really good at like a, a drying your dog after a bath or like cleaning your car and things like that. Um, so most of the videos I do are marketing, uh, but I try to do a little bit of a few fun projects here and there too, uh, like helping friends out with music videos and things like that. So okay. I've been doing that for about, um, I've been doing that since I, w I mean, really since I was like 14 uh, or maybe like 13. Um, for most of my life, I was just into video games and that was it. Um, and then my younger, one day I was playing a game on the computer and my youngest brothers or my younger brothers, Josh and Tyler, actually, they were begging me to come outside and like, they had, they had choreographed this sword fight with wooden swords. They were begging me to come outside and film it and like make a video of it. And I was like, guys, no, like I'm playing video games. And they kept asking me. So I finally went out there and did it. And as I was shooting it, we were just having so much fun and we were playing around with like the angles and the choreography. And I was like, this is actually kind of cool. I think I might like put this to some music or something like that. And then I, I did that and it was so much fun that we did another one and then we did another one. And then I was like, oh, you know what? I actually like video production. Um, and pretty much the rest was history. So I, I always tell people like, if it was like, I had a lot of people that helped, like my dad was in the video production, my mom's a photographer, my stepdad is in the film, my grandpa was a photographer. Um, so I like had exposure, but yeah. if it wasn't for my younger brothers who are four and five years younger than me, forcing me to come out that one day to like make a video for them, I probably wouldn't be doing any of this um, like wow. over, over 10 years later. So I always give them props whenever I'm sort of like letting people know what I what I do. Yeah, see, so. you're starting it up again. I tell you, I didn't know. Wait, how, now how old were you at that point when they were begging you to come and you found I was 13 or 14. Okay, all right. I yeah. I remember you, you saying that. All right, that's awesome though. Yeah, yeah, and I was gonna say, now you are third generation, right? In um, mm -hmm. photography and video, okay, all right. Yeah. I love this. And I did not know I only found out about your grandfather when I first had Brandy on my show. Well, the first time I had her on my show yeah. um, to find out about your grandfather, uh, uh, Mr. Hill. And I'm like, oh, wow, I did not know. Okay, so the apple didn't fall too far from the tree. And then, yeah. after, and then I hear about you and you I, I love it. I absolutely and, love and it. And my grandpa, he was the one, um, he actually gave me my first camera um he gave it to us after 
he had taken us to like the conservatory. It might have been like the Garfield Park one or or I don't know which one, but he had taken us to a conservatory to like take uh like photos of like flowers, um, do some micro macro photography. Um and I remember like holding the camera and like playing with like going in and out of focus. And I was like, oh, this is like what they do in movies. Like this is like <laughs> super cool. I'm just like being super interested in it. Um and he kind of like he saw that interest. Um he gave me one of my first cameras. I love it. And at the time I was like too young to like really appreciate it. So my mom used it way more than I did, but <laughs> it was it was a seed that was planted. So Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I and obviously, like you said, he saw that in you too, to even, you know give you that and all right so obviously must have sparked some sparked something for you I love it I love it and you know I think you know with our children we need to pass stuff positive down you know um so I'm, I'm glad that they were able to pass that on to you you know I don't know if between the three of y'all you all share tips or anything like that mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if that if that happens or not does it yeah yeah it it uh it does now, especially um, more often than not. I mean, like, it's it's actually kind of funny. Um, whenever me, my mom, my grandpa, and uh, my stepdad Joe, like, when we kind when we get together, we all kind of just like talk about photography and li like we'll literally just talk about that for like hours. Like, I'll come over, have dinner, and we'll just talk about that, and I'll leave. Like, that'll be. Um, the topic of discussion because it's 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 a lot of fun to talk about yeah. um we definitely share share tips uh there's a lot of things that i learned from my mom about like posing and stuff like that because she's been doing it for so long um and just like working with clients and like helping them feel comfortable mm -hmm. like 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 with shoots like I, I learned a lot of that from her um <clears throat> i always enjoy like hearing my grandpa's i call him papa uh hearing papa's like stories of of when he was like my age and like how he first got into it. Um, and like when he was just like experimenting with photography, like yeah. that's always like super interesting for me. Um, so yeah, yeah, we definitely do share, we share stories, we share tips. Uh, cool. Yeah, especially now that it's like um, in the last like few years, like I've actually like made it like my thing uh, instead of like, this is like my priority more than like chasing any other like kind of career, like this is my thing. Uh, so we talk about it a lot more now. I love it. I love it. Oh, my goodness. OK, so that was great background there. Uh, Fred Walls Media, you guys need to check him out. OK, so now uh, once you finally maybe like got comfortable in it, did you um, and you may have kind of stated this before, but did you have like, OK, I know my mom does this. My granddad used to do this. But what is my purpose? What do I want to bring um, to this industry? Do I want to bring a different look, a different, uh, what have you? What, what is the purpose of Fred Walls Media? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so <clears throat> the purpose is, uh, <clears throat> it's phlegm, it's not COVID. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a little bit more, it's probably more self-serving than, than, I think some people like start and do things because they like want to change the world. Um, if I'm being honest, my primary motivation was because this is just a lot of fun for me. Um, and I like doing it. I remember um, having a conversation with this one guy. He, uh, he has a nonprofit that is dedicated to like fighting bullying and stuff like that. And <clears throat> there's a ton of nonprofits out there like that. So he was talking to a guy at an event one time and he was like, oh, so you want to do a nonprofit that stops bullying? Okay, that's cool. But like, why does the world need another one? Like, there's already like a million of you. Like, like why, what's your purpose for like coming on the scene? Um, and so that's kind of a question that I've always like tried to ask myself, like, why does the world need another photographer? um what is it that i like have to offer that that's that's different um and going back to like what i just said earlier like i don't think the world like needs another photographer um i just do this because i like it i'm good at it and i can um now if if at some point my 
I, I do think that like some point in the future and maybe even now, like I, I want to play around with the idea of using the medium to like communicate to people um, like social messages. Like I went to, um, I live in Pilsen, the Pilsen neighborhood in Chicago. And um, every, every like three weeks or four weeks, they, they open up all these art galleries like on, on Halstead. Um, and there's this one painter, this one artist, uh, this lady um, from, I forget exactly where she's from, but she like makes paintings um, that basically <clears throat> communicate, communicate some of the pain that people have experienced in different parts of the world. Um, so like one painting was all about, um, one of what was about like World War II. Um, and instead of showing like all the happiness and like the celebration um, that Americans associate, associate with like winning the war, um, she painted pictures that depicted like, you know, people who were on the losing end, not because like they were fighting for the wrong side of the war, but because they um, were just like in the crosshairs. Um, so the people that were affected by the war that weren't really fighting it, um, just sort of like drawing attention to the fact that like, yeah, like war is like something that we do because we feel like we need to and it's necessary and like we go to like liberate people, but like also understand that like you're making a mess in other areas. Mm -hmm. And if you're gonna make that mess, acknowledge it and like clean it up. You know what I'm saying? Almost like in superhero movies, when Iron Man or the Hulk, they go around and, and, and they destroy things because they have to kill the bad guy. Well, yeah, but like also the Empire State Building just fell um that's gonna cost a lot of money and some people probably died because of that so like do what you gotta do but just be aware that that happened and um help people recover so I guess what I'm saying is like in the future I would hope that I can use like my art um to impact like social causes or like to draw attention to that um that's an avenue that I've been playing around with in my or that's an idea that I've been playing around with in my head um and I think I think in order to do that, it just comes down to two things. One, making the time for it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think two, just having the courage to like do that. Um, because making a political statement is very different than like doing something for money. You know what I'm saying? Like when I, the things that I do now, I don't really need your approval. I just need your money. You know what I'm saying? Um, whereas other things, it's like, if you're gonna make a statement, like you kinda, you shouldn't look for people's approval, but it's, I guess it just requires a little bit more courage than, you know, doing things for money, so. Right, okay, love it, I love it. Um, uh, uh, Brandy, I know you're probably still on here, but this young man reminds me so much of Brandy, I declare you does, I declare you do. Your 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 thought processes, and it, I, I just see Brandy a lot. Like even when we had you guys on the A&D conversation the other week, yeah, I saw. I I heard Brandy. I saw and heard Brandy. I'm like, he, he's just like his mom. It's so funny because I can never see it, but people keep saying that, so it must be true. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's not necessary now. When I when I first saw a picture of you, I told her that I thought you looked just like her. She said, "Well, no, I think he looks more like his dad." And I'm like, "Okay, I've never seen his dad, but I'm not only necessarily talking about the visual. I mean, your mannerisms, everything, your 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 concepts." Um, I hear Brandy <laughs> or, you know, whatever, but I mean, it's not a bad thing. Trust me. Trust me on that. It's yeah. Not a bad thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So let's see here. Let me hop back over here. If you guys are just not joining us on uh, mind, body and soul today, we're talking um, with Mr. Fred Walls of Fred Walls Media. He is, I, you see my title, young entre entrepreneurial and black. Okay. And so we want to talk to him today about his business. And then we want to talk to him about um, being a young Afri or African American, some people prefer you to say black, um, male in this society now, and especially with all that we're dealing with and how he is, um, how he is surviving, how he is living. So I, I, we want to hear from him as well. If um, many of you probably had an opportunity to um, tune into the AMD conversation when we had the millennials on, I had already planned to have Mr. Walls on uh, Mind, Body, and Soul before we actually put that show into motion. But I mean, it just goes to show you that we need to hear from our millennials. <laughs> <laughs> bottom line, bottom line. Okay, so um, 
thank you all so much. Those who have shared already, I appreciate you more than you know. Um, and if you're just not joining us and you haven't shared, go ahead and hit that share button for us. We would really appreciate it. Uh, Brandy says he has an absolutely incredible presence on the stage. Oh, okay. We can kind of back end up talking about when, when I saw you on the stage. Yes, I saw. Wait, wait, before I read the rest of these, how many plays have you been in? Do you remember? Oh, man. Um, probably elite, prob some, probably close to 10. Cool. Uh, yeah. throughout, throughout, <laughs> throughout high school and college. Woo, okay. Um, so two, five, eight, somewhere between 10 and 15 probably. That is impressive. Very impressive. Oh, I love I love it. Okay. A lot of fun. I wish I could do more right now. Really? Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well we we know that that hidden talent there. <laughs> <laughs> you know something else now. Um, yeah. let's see here make sure I have all um the questions I want. I see you Robin. Robin says I remember when he was a little boy, sweet and quiet spirit. Uh, Gina, we thank you for watching. Um, uh, Greg Owens, thank you for watching. Milton Thomas, Anthony Davis, we appreciate all of you. And I thank those of you that are um, tagging individuals as well. Thank you so much. Make sure you guys tag some millennials too. Um, tag some of us old folks too. Janetta Franklin, I see you. Thanks for watching. Um, Pastor Marshall, we appreciate you. Uh, Dr. Lord Michael Hunt is on. Uh-oh. Uh oh, know. I'm nervous now. <laughs> I gotta go. I'm sorry. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh my goodness. We appreciate you, uh, Dr. Hunt, for uh, step, uh, stopping in and listening to us on today. We appreciate you. Uh, Brandy says, that's a very noble idea. Your art isn't really important until it is touching people and making a social or global statement. Uh, um, Joe said he's learned a lot from you, Joe McCord. Love it. And see, that is what I, that's another thing. Y'all move, y'all moving a step ahead of me. But this is another thing what I would kind of want to bring out because um, I love y'all young people. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that we can learn an awful lot. You and I kind of chit-chatted a little bit earlier today about another situation I, I was talking, uh, talking about. I think there's a lot to be learned. Um, you know, looking at you all, I was looking at an article and I, I'll just say this, uh, Fred, I was looking at an article talking about millennials and, you know, some of the first things, um, that they, that they say about millennials, they say you all are spoiled, um, that you are, um, you, you feel that you're entitled and you're self-centered. Mm -hmm. Okay. They say a lot of that, and they, I can I can kind of see where they're getting that from because you know you're you're in this age and you know you do a lot of selfies. It's a lot of reflecting or talking about me me me, you know type thing. Um, but there's still to me uh, something that we can learn from you all, just like you all can learn from us. Um, I, I still think that there is something that we can learn from the millennials, and we don't have to um, put them down. And just, oh, they're so young in the head. They don't know anything. No, just like Joe just said, he's learned from you. Um, I know I've learned from millennials. I have a lot of um, young um, cousins, young adult cousins that, I mean, I treasure them. I, I appreciate them so much. They And they're going out and they are just doing things. My nieces and nephews, you know, they're, well, you met some of them the other week. Um, and, and so I'm just so appreciative of, again, what I can glean, if you will, um, from you all in your generation. Um, what, what do you think about some of those terms that, they, that they've said about you all? You are the me, me, me generation. You think you're entitled, self-centered. What do you think about those terms? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that those are all accurate. <laughs> I, I, like I, I think that that's all true, um, and I'm speaking like obviously as one person, mm -hmm. uh, and and we're painting brush, we're you know painting brush strokes, but um, so I mean if we just start if we just start with like the like the age of like social media, information technology, um, the American. American culture is very individualistic, right? Like 
do what I got to do, American dream, achieve prosperity, preserve the self, you know what I mean? Winners and losers. Um, winners and losers are, are very much like a part of our society. And I won't just say it's only American because I, I don't travel that much. So that would be, mis it would probably be misguided for me to say that, but I, I just know that that is the way that we think about things. Mm -hmm. um, and that's amplified in the age of selfies. Um, so we have Instagram, we've got Facebook. I mean, like, sometimes I, sometimes I look at people like taking selfies or like making like video selfies of themselves. And I'm like, man, this is crazy. Like, imagine 30 years ago when no one had a camera on their phone. Like, what did they spend their time doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, like if you really just think about it, like, like we take pictures of ourselves. There are some people who like take like motion videos of themselves, like, like smiling and stuff like that. And I'm not judging. Right. Um, it's just like, we're, we're, we have the ability to take photos of ourselves, post them, see how many people like them. Um, it is, it's, some, it's, it's something that's drawn us to be more individualistic, to mm -hmm. care about ourselves um, and to want like instant feedback, um, which is like something that like social media does. Um, but it's also, so, so you have like, you have like the fact that like, we're, we're like very individual like as that's like culturally who we are and then like social media and like the age of selfies has kind of like amplified that. Um, but, but then we also have things like Uber Eats and Postmates. Like you can get like food, you can order food like on your phone and get it delivered. Um, we have things like dating apps where you can like meet 50 people on your phone without leaving your couch. Um, we have like a lot like technology and like smartphones that have made it to where like, there are a lot of things that we can get access to. I don't have to wait if I want to get information on something. I can just Google it. Yeah. I can say like, hey, Google, like, you know, hey, Siri, like, let me get this information um, directly instead of like going to a library and like spending hours, like doing research. I can't remember the last time I've, I, I picked up a book at a library. Um, and so like in a lot in a lot of ways that's good because like we can do things faster uh but it's also like reduced like made it to where we don't have as much patience mm -hmm. um and, and i think there's a certain amount of patience that when you grow up without technology the people that came before me um you are forced to sort of develop a sort a, a, a sense of patience because like everything that is not always like there for you um, you can't get information as soon as you want. You can't just order phone or, or order food on your phone. Um, you can't just meet a bunch of people uh, through an app. Um, and you can't get instant, you know, feedback on your hair, on your haircut uh, through through likes and things like that. Um, so I think one of the biggest things that we could learn from like the generations that come before us is like patience um, and persistence. Um, but on the flip side of that, like when you, when, when you get things faster, you're able to like do more. Um, so, so I do think that like the fact that like, we're able to have more access to information means that we're able to accomplish more or like have bigger ideas or like just think outside of the box more. Um, cause we're not as restricted by what we don't know, if that makes any sense. Okay. Um, so I guess everything I want to say is like, yeah, like we are super spoiled. Um, it definitely is all about us all the time. And that's a problem. Um, I think it's, a, I think it's one of those things where you kind of like got, got to take the good with the bad and like, see where you can like learn from previous generations. Um, and sort of, you know, figure out where you can learn from like other people from and like how we can like learn from other generations. Um, so yeah, I hope that made sense. It does, it does. Um, <clears throat> a couple things, you, you mentioned about some of the things that you all can learn from older generations, which were, one was patience and the other one was persistence, I believe you said. Um, that's interesting because I, and this is just me, this is Annette, everybody. <laughs> I think that the older generation, we can learn that persistence from you all. 
Mm. Um, because I, I see that persistence. I see that you're not just going to take um, no for an answer or you're not just going to uh, 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 take things lying down. Let's just take what we're, what we're involved in right now. You know, um, you know the, the racism that we're dealing with and then the marches and everything. I see in, in these young people and millennials and, and younger that they are persistent in making a change or wanting to, you know, a change to occur. Um, whereas, I mean, you all will get out there on the lines, you know, or what have you and do some things. And then we're kind of sitting back at home, like, okay, that's good. You guys go, or why are they out there? You know, or something like that. But you're, you're allowing, or you, you're making your voice to be heard, if you will. And you're persistent in that, in that aspect. So that, that's just what I've observed, mm. you know, between the different generations. Um, but you, you made some good key points there. Very good key points. Um, let's see. Oh, Devon, thank you so much. They're, they're tagging, they're sharing. Um, there was a comment here. Pastor Cece said, it is so wonderful to see you coming into your own. She, uh, she says, I'm anticipating your business prospering and hearing your statement and it making an impact. I know it will be powerful. That was beautiful. That was. Thank you. Thank you. Eugenia, thanks for watching. Alyssa is on. Uh, Pastor Marshall said, uh, totally enjoying his viewpoints, praying for all your endeavors, a uh, young, thriving Black man. Uh, Robert Downer Jr. is on. Thanks, young man, for watching on today. Um, oh, okay, Divine, I see you're driving. Okay, be, be careful. Be careful. Uh, Elise Crawford is on. Thanks for watching. Cedric Ware, we appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Alyssa says, immediate gratification, a bit addictive, as you, as you were talking, you know, about the various uh, characteristics. Uh, Carolyn, thank you for watching. Um, Annette Murphy, my namesake here, thank you for watching. Uh, Alyssa says uh, she agrees with that. Their generation is giving her hope. That's good. Uh, and she, uh, Annette says, my daughters are fired up for change. They're 19 and 22. Yeah, I love this. I love this. Yeah. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm learning. I am learning from you guys. You guys will fire me up. I'm telling you. Uh, John Richardson, the floor. Thank you for watching, young man. We appreciate you. Chloe Brooks is on. I appreciate you. Another uh, wonderful young entrepreneur there. Um, I see here on my watch party. Um, Janet Campbell is on. Thanks for watching. Um, I think some of you all are doubling. I appreciate that. So I got to make sure I watch over here to see if you have any comments on my watch party as well. Um, Sue says, best, wood, best wishes, Fred. Hearts are opening up like flowers because of you. All, all right now. Come on, Sue. I'll thank you. You're going to make me cry. Oh, that is so sweet. I love it. I love it. But see, again, this is, this is, what, I, this is what I love to bring out. I love to bring out the impact that um, you as a young person can make. Uh, we don't have to, again, kick you to the side because you're younger and we think that you don't know anything. Um, that this, and th this is why I wanted you on. This is, you know, on this platform and then to be able to hear from you, um, you know, about your own business, you know, for one. Um, and, and if any of you uh, missed that uh, opening, him giving the background of Fred Walls Media, you may have to go and rewind and uh, check it out. But we do want you to, to check out Mr. Walls. Now, I, I want to ask you this, and I know I'm kind of, I'm, I'm going kind of back and forth a little bit here with, with my questions um, that I have for you. But since we've been in this pandemic, how has Fred Walls Media been affected? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'll start by saying that I'm doing well. Um, I was very nervous at first uh, when when I first learned about exactly like what COVID-19 was and why we needed to stay home. Uh, I had some clients cancel on me and I canceled on a lot of clients. Uh, I canceled things for about two, I think about three weeks, three weeks of shooting um, just until we could like get more information, see what was happening, stay home. Um, and, and things still have not picked up the way that they were before. 
Um, so I still do video shoots with like five or less people uh, practicing social distance as much as possible. So wearing masks, um, you know, I'm shooting, you know, like a video interview, shooting it on like a, on a telephoto zoom lens. So I don't have to be close to the person. Uh, the microphone that I use is not like a, is not a, a lapel mic that you attach. It's a, it's a boom mic that you stick over their head on a stand. So they don't have to touch a microphone. I don't have to touch them. They don't have to, we don't have to have any physical contact. Uh, I do those every once in a while. Um, but the bulk of my work is editing. Um, the bulk of video production in general is like, you'll spend four hours shooting, but then you'll spend like 20 hours editing. Um, and I charge hourly. So that's like the bulk of that, that, that's the bulk of, of my income. Um, so it's like every now and then I'm doing shoots like that, but a lot of people, because they can't meet in person, people want a lot more video content actually. So I've actually had an increase in some clients saying, hey, um, we're supposed to go to this conference to meet our clients and talk to them about you know, the year or whatever, but we can't. So we're gonna record some videos on the webcams send those to you, have you edit them, put some music to them, motion graphics and all that stuff. Uh, so in some areas I've actually got an increase of business, um, which is really nice. I feel really blessed. Um, I, I, I almost feel recession proof, which is a, which is a blessing to say. Um, but I've definitely cut down on shooting uh, and a lot of uh, like passion projects. Like a lot of my portraiture uh, is stuff that I am still am just getting into. So. Um, a lot of it is being done for fun. I have some paying clients, but a lot of that work um, is like, you know, I know, you know, being in Chicago, like I know people who are photographers, I know people who are models and we're like, hey, you're free on Thursday afternoon. So am I like, come over and let's shoot, you know, and let's do something. So I've definitely cut down on that. If it's not making me any money right now, I'm not doing anything um, or I'm not doing things that don't make money at this moment. Um, but hopefully, you know, that can change pretty soon. So, okay. okay. Um, so you've talked about the different changes that you have um, made for, you know, the few um, uh, appointments that you've been able to do now. So is that how you're going to do going forward? You're going to, I mean, because I know every, we're all still learning, <clears throat> you know, again, about how we should uh, look at things, you know, going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and I talked earlier about whatever this normal is or whatever, if we will have a new normal or not. Um, but is that how you're going to look at uh, when you book clients and, you know, events? Are you still going to, you know, just practice that social mm -hmm. distancing? Do you ever think that we'll kind of get, you'll get back to where you were yeah. before? Or Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I think that for the foreseeable future, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. Um, different states are moving into phases. I know in Chicago or in Illinois, we're like in phase three. Um, I'm waiting a couple of weeks to see if any of that changes because the reality is like the entire world has been in the streets by the thousands recently for a good cause. And I was one of them. Um, but we can't ignore the fact that, you know, that might change some numbers. Um, but for the foreseeable future, that's what I'm going to do um, until you know, we decide that it is safe again or until we figure something out with like immunity. Um, I don't I don't think that it's gonna be like this forever. It just feels like forever. Um, but I, I mean, I think if we look at like pandemic, if we look at like pandemics in like other part of the world or, or outbreaks in other part of the world and how they've handled them, um, you know, historically, like things are weird for a while and then eventually we figure things out, uh, we get back to normal. Because the truth is like, I wanna get back to like, giving my clients a handshake or a hug when I see them, you know what I mean? We have a good shoot. I remember it was the it was literally the last, the last shoot before I started quarantine. I had this really good shoot with uh, like some like scientists, these researchers and we're like, yeah. And then we like high-fived or I gave her a handshake and it was like, <gasps> And then like turn around and like go wash your hands real quick. Cause it's like, we forgot, like we weren't supposed to be like high five or giving handshakes. Right. Um, so like, I, I want to get back to that. I think at some point we will. Um, I just think we gotta, you know, that won't be tomorrow. Um, 
and we just have to be patient and wait for that day to come. So. Okay. Well, um, I know it's like we're kind of sitting at the edge of our seats, you know, not knowing exactly what's going to happen or when. Um, and, and, and it's so crazy. I'll tell you this, Fred, like with myself, it's like, you, so you try to think of how it's going to be or how you should proceed going forward. And in my, I, I can't even, I can't, my mind won't even let me go because it's like, I'm here right now mm-hmm. and I'm seeing all this and I see what has happened already, you know, with it. And I'm talking in respect to COVID, of course. Um, but it's like, you know, like with traveling and different things like that. My, 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 my little mind right now, I just can't even yeah. grasp that right now. Or I don't know. I'm just weird, I guess. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, um, let's see. Uh, Buddy says, okay, I'm back at work. Uh, just want to say that I was impressed with Fred Walls when he was on the A&D Conversation Show. Um, I can tell he's going to go places. Yes, I agree, Buddy. He is a go-getter for sure. Uh, Lady Iris Reed is on. Thanks for watching. Dominic, uh, Apostle Dion Hunt, thank you for watching and sharing. I think I saw you share. Um, he says, I'm really proud of this young man. Um, I am too. Let's see. Uh, Sue says, Fred Walls Media video to white people went right straight to my soul. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, oh, you're getting ahead of me, Sue. Oh my God, you're getting ahead of me. But yes, I, I have to talk about that today. Um, um, it's also, she said, uh, it activated me to serve on a whole new level to change this world. Mm-mm-mm. Apostle Dion says, yeah, I remember hugs. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, Apostle. It's like it's so far off in the distance now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, Linda Bivens, I believe this is a relative, right? Fred is such mm-hmm. an intelligent, articulate, and talented young guy. Handsome, too. His wisdom is far beyond his years. I am so blessed to have him in my life. He is humble and appreciates the small things in life, like spending time with his family. I'm a proud great aunt. I, that's what I thought. That's what I, what I thought it was, Linda Bivens. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. Tam says, uh, good afternoon. Uh, let's see. Who else is on? Linda, how are you, Linda? Thank you. Thank you for watching. My cousin is on. I know you are not weird. Oh, thank you, cousin. <laughs> she said, we are all having difficulty wrapping our brain around the, the virus and restrictions. Yeah, that's where I am. That's why I am. Uh, okay, so let's see here on uh, the uh, watch party. I see you, Zori. Thanks for watching and for sharing as well. Um, you guys are on this watch party too, so thank you so much. Um, we're talking today, if you're just not joining us again, Young Entrepreneurial and Black. Mr. Fred Walls of Fred Walls Media. We've already talked about his business. We talked a little bit about uh, millennials. Um, I want to ask you some more questions. Now, do you, was it difficult, okay, when you finally, you talked about your background with getting into videography and photography, then you started your business. I think it's kind of been like really up and running real good for the past three years. Is that right? So it's been fully operational for the last year, but okay. it's, been a, it's been a side hustle for, it was a side hustle for the previous two years. Okay, all right. What, what kind of challenges was Mr. Fred faced with when you were organizing or figuring, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this as a business. Uh, what kind of challenges did you face as a young black man, mm-hmm. um, as a millennial? Um, and, and, and did these challenges, um, when did these challenges come? Cause I'm, I'm, I know that there were some challenges. I know that there were. Um, when did they come and how did you get beyond or are you beyond any of those challenges? Yeah. I know it was a loaded question, so take your time. No, no, no. I'm just figuring out where to start. Um, I would say if I were to bullet it out, I would probably say like time, money, uh, learning the industry, um, and dealing with perceptions of like who I who I am or who I was. So I'll start with the first one. So time, um, 
anyone who's like been in my life or like has known me for the last like three heck five years uh, knows that like some would say that I work too much uh, and I would say for a lot of my life I felt like I've worked I don't want to say that I worked too much because if I didn't I wouldn't be where I am uh, but I know I'm at the place now where like I don't want to work as much as I've been working um, because I don't feel like I have to now so like it was always like after college it was like full-time job also an internship a part-time internship uh, or a full-time job also freelancing on the side um, it was always like something else that I was doing outside of my 40 hour a week job um, and that's hard because it's like I have friends that I love I have family that I love um, I also just like want to sleep um, <laughs> but like but like I know that if I do spend more time with my family if I do sleep if I do spend more time with my friends I'm not going to get to where I want to get um, so it, it was really hard um, not having um, as much of a social life as I wanted to, um, as much of a family life as I wanted to. And I say family as if I have a wife and kids. I'm just talking about like my parents and my siblings. Like I just, I, I, love, my, I love my family. Um, and so that, that has been hard for a while, um, just knowing that you don't have enough time. And so making sure that like, if I'm not doing something that I, that I want to do, like this better be getting me where I need to get. Like it's better be worth it because this is the one resource that I can't make more of is time. Um, so, so that was probably the, one of the biggest challenges is, is, is the time constraints. Second thing was money, just capital, uh, video production and, and photography. The equipment is very expensive. Um, and so like I would work full time to pay my bills and then my side hustle, all my money from my, my, my internships or any freelance work I was doing would just go back into buying more equipment or go back into paying off the loan that I just got for this equipment. Um, so it was very much like, um, if I wasn't doing all this extra work and not spending time with family, I wouldn't have been able to afford to like, you know, keep funding the business itself. Um, having capital is just, it's something that's difficult. And honestly, like some people, I, I was fortunate enough to like, be able to like borrow money because my credit score was good. A lot of people don't have that option. Um, so like for a lot of people in video production to like get to the level that I'm at, they just aren't able to do it because, because capital, uh, which is, I really hate, I hate it when money is the only obstacle because I feel like as long as you work hard, you should be able to get things. But the reality is that's, that's not, that's not true for some people. Um, so that, that was a challenge, uh, that I had to overcome that I was blessed to be able to overcome. Um, and then the perceptions, um, and I don't want to project anything onto anybody. Um, and I'm not going to confirm and say that anybody saw me a specific way. Uh, but being Black and being young are two things that um, most of my clients, where I get my money from, I'm working with like businesses, corporations. Um, and so like being young and being Black in like corporate America or like dealing with clients, sometimes it's great. You know what I mean? Because like, they don't care or they're excited about something, you know, new and fresh. But some people are kind of like, okay, this person, this person's young, this person's black, like, eh, like, do we want to do business with them? Um, like, is this person going to get the job done? And no one has ever like explicitly said that. So I don't want to like accuse anyone of doing that. Um, but sometimes you can kind of tell uh, by the way, like people act around you or like the looks that they give you. Um, sometimes it's just because they're rude, but sometimes it's because um, of who you are. Um, and, you know, being Black, you have to sort of like overperform to prove that you're, you're better than what people think you are. Um, and being young, you know, you have to overperform so that people don't think you're lazy. You know what I mean? Um, and that's just something that it's, it's, it's always important to keep in mind what people possibly think of you so that you can like fight against it. Um, not saying to be self-conscious. I'm not saying to always doubt yourself. Just like be aware of like who you are and what the world perceives you as. Because mm -hmm. when you're aware of that, then you know how to navigate it, I feel like. Um, so yeah, time, capital, and perceptions are probably the biggest challenges. Okay. But I, you know, I've been blessed and I... I, you know, I can say that I was able to get through those, uh, still working through some of them, you know what I mean? But 
you know, God is good. You know, I'm here. So I love it. I love it. I yeah. love your mentality. You are such you're you're really an inspiration. You really are. I love it. Because uh, obviously you you set yourself and you're like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And you know, I know what I need to do to take care of it. You know, I I love it. I love it. Uh just said facts. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it 100. Yes, for sure, Josh. I agree. Uh, let's see here. I am. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I see you, Brandy. Um, you stepping ahead of me, too. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to that video. I am. I am. <laughs> Everybody wants to hear about your video. All right. So let's see. Uh, who else is on here that I did not acknowledge? Um, and making sure because i don't like anybody to think i'm ignoring them i do appreciate all of you guys for joining in on us uh on today what i'm going to do right now is i am actually going to i'm going to play our spoken word because the spoken word is in relation to uh, a reference to your business and what you do and then once i play the spoken word then we're going to come back and we're going to chat about this video some questions that i have for you okay don't, don't get nervous on me, Fred. I see that look on your face. I'm, I'm getting nervous, but it's okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Brandy said this is a great conversation. Oh, how does a Black entrepreneur, I'll ask this before I do the spoken word, Brandy. How does a Black entrepreneur in the corporate world handle servicing those who have made it clear they don't value your race as a whole? Oh, my goodness. Okay. You know what? <laughs> We're gonna wrap all of that into this second session, okay? All right, so let me do this. Let me set up the spoken word um, from Elder McGee um, that he penned for us on today. Uh, and I want you guys to take a listen to this and then we're gonna come back. We got a ooh, whole nother hour. I'm excited to talk with Mr. Walls on today. This is My Body and Soul. Guys, if you're just not joining us, make sure if you haven't done so already, to go ahead and click the share button. Now, Fred, I'm gonna ask you, when I play the spoken word, let me know if you can hear it. Give me a thumbs up, okay? Okay. Uh, if you can hear it. You need me to mute my... No. Okay. With a click, the world is captured. Your eyes are the advanced scout that will decide if the images shall be released into our minds. Life captured, immortalized with digital paints on digital canvases, giving us new perspectives of the world around us, taking us on a journey that we otherwise would never embark on, bringing joy to those who are the subject of your craft, whether photo or video, they come to life, allowing all to see the gift that is inherent in you. As the camera clicks and the poses go forth from movement to crossing ankles, from striking a profile to placing your chin in hand, making models out of anyone who crosses the lens, open our eyes and let us see into your world and the wonders therein. All right, all right. Thank you, Elder McGee. Elder McGee, thank you so much for pinning that word, talking about photography. <laughs> I was listening, I was listening to it. I was like, what's all this noise? Oh, it's the photographer, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> that was very, that, that was, that was, that, that was good. Thank you again. Um, and you guys remember Elder McGee has a show here, uh, well, at Intellectual Radio on Saturdays um, entitled Connections, uh, 12 noon Central Standard Time. So you guys make sure you support him as well. Um, so that was like our little commercial break before we come to talk about this this video, let me get my questions together first. You guys have just hopped on in here. Nicole Scott, thank you for watching. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us on today. Um, and this is going to be kind of loaded. I took a look at your video. I actually saw it the very first day. Um, I think you had actually gone live when I saw it. Now, no, no, I think you had ended it. Well, it, but it was the same day. And I thought to myself, wow. Let me tell you why I thought, wow. Because, okay, we're, we're in this time now that many of us have not seen before, okay? And we're also at, at, a, at a time where um, we're gonna talk about what's on our minds and our hearts as black people, okay? 
Whereas before, or maybe it was the other generations or my generation, where we weren't as easy to verbally talk about it with everybody else. Now we can talk about it amongst ourselves, among other black people, about what's on our minds or what's what's angry, you know, making us angry or or how we're so upset about how they treated us or whatever. We will talk about it amongst ourselves in a heartbeat. But here's this young man that I saw on this live feed and he's just, he's being frank, he's being honest, he's being upfront about how this entire situation has affected him. And he started off by saying that he appreciate or appreciated the white people that have contacted him to see if he's okay during all of this that has transpired. And you said, thank you for that. And after that, you just kind of let it rip, <laughs> you know, in terms of, um, because some, some asked you, some white people asked you, I think this is how it kind of started off, what can I do? And I think that they, you know, they probably came to you, number one, because they know you, maybe they've had, you know, developed some kind of relationship with you, whether it was your clients or friends or what have you, and they felt comfortable enough to come to Fred to ask him. Well, what can I do, um, you know, to alleviate or whatever, or make a change or start a change or what have you. And so then you began to express this to them, what they could do. And I said, wow, again, because of your, um, what, you, what you shared with them. And you just about had me in tears by the end of your video with the words that you said at the end, and you know what I'm referring to. Um, and I had to go back and take a look at your video again before today's session. And I said to myself, Lord have mercy. Is this how, and I'm, I'm gonna try not to cry today. I'm gonna try my best because it, it, it this whole situation Systemic racism, racism, just period. It's, it's affecting everybody now and you can see it. Um, but then a lot of times to hear our young people to talk about it or a young black man such as yourself to talk about it. You said, I'm 25. And if you all, those that have asked me, what could you do? Don't do this as a white person. I don't know if I'll live to see I forget what it was, it 30? 30. Yeah. Um, and that's obviously the reality of many of our young black men. That's, that's their thought, whether they verbally say it or not. So let's, 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 let's go into this on today. Um, I'll ask you, and I kind of summarized probably why you did the video, but tell me in your own words and tell our viewers in, in your own words, because there's someone here who did not see that video. They don't really know, um, even though I summarized it, exactly what we're referring to. So maybe you can kind of give us a little mm -hmm. overview of the video itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, like we said, I, I was getting, so So seeing black men like die at the hands of police is is an is literally like traumatizing. Um, I remember in twenty being in college like in twenty fourteen when Eric Gardner died. Um, I remember seeing that video and then almost failing all of my exams that week <laughs> because I couldn't I couldn't focus. Um, and I didn't feel like there was anyone I could talk to about it, really. Um, my school was like, the school I went to was like 95% white, which I, I, again, I love my white friends. Um, but I didn't feel like there was anyone to talk, I could talk to about it. Didn't know how to have a dialogue. I knew I could talk to my family about it, but like, there comes a point, where, you know, people are like, oh, like, have you been able to like talk to your family? You know, stuff like that. It's like, like, what is there to talk about? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, this has been, like, there's nothing new. If anything, when I get with my family, we just want to forget about this and just relax and make each other laugh. Um, 
And and so this this last case with George Floyd, um, I remember watching the video and then not being able to sleep. Um, I I I would have like night terrors of uh, of my dad actually. Um, be just being pulled over by a cop um and people and and it so it was the, the question like from a white person that says what can i do to help at first that question was really weird to me i was like i mean unless you can end systematic racism there's really nothing you can do and then i was like oh wait maybe you can you know what i mean um It, it, it felt like, um, you know how sometimes people ask you, oh, let me know if there's anything I can do, but they don't really want you to respond. Right. They're like, oh man, I hope he doesn't actually ask me because then I'm gonna have to go over there or I'm gonna have to ignore him. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I, I, I knew that people weren't doing that, but that's what it felt like. Because okay. it was like, you know that this, like, you know that this has nothing, this doesn't impact you. Um, I could tell you how I feel, but like at the end of the day, you're going to walk away and go back to like living your life and not caring. Um, like, like the question to me doesn't make sense. It, 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 you're actually part of the problem, you know what I mean? But you're not going to adjust your life and inconvenience yourself in a way that it, that it, that it impacts me or it impacts my family or anything like that. Um, but I wanted to like take the question seriously because people were actually asking me and I knew the people that were reaching out to me genuinely were hurt and they genuinely were disgusted. Um, so I just had to like sit with the question for a while. I just, there were a few people I just didn't text back. I was like, I, and it, it wasn't until I was talking to my buddy where I was, until I said the same thing that you were saying. Um, it's like, I mean, there's really nothing they can do unless they can end systematic racism. That would be great. Oh, wait. Well, let's see. Like, maybe if we can change the hearts of a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Draw attention to the issues that people just don't know about um, and make it clear that racism is not okay and that it can't thrive. Maybe that will change things. So that's why I made that video. So for, if for any viewer who hasn't seen the video, basically I made a video that said, this is how white people can help. If you're a white person who is not racist, I want you to find a racist white person, whether that's somebody in your family, an extended family, a friend, coworker, someone that you don't even know, you gotta go find one. Find one racist white person and convert them to a non-racist white person. Because like systematic injustice, um, every, all of the systems that we have are created by people, right? And so if we change the hearts of, of the people who are creating systems, then the systems will change. Don't get me wrong. Like there are some very like solid things that we need to do. You know what I'm saying? Like when it comes to reform of police and, um, you know, uh, underfunded neighborhoods, underfunded schools, like uh, mass incarceration. Like there's some, some solid concrete things we need to do with legislation like today. Um, but there are people out there working on that. So I figured, well, while they're doing that, I'm going to try to see if we can work on the hearts of people. Um, to sort of like make their job easier, sort of like coming at it from like a, from two different approaches, you know what I'm saying? Instead of just like focusing on one thing. Um, so I made that video and I just kind of explained like, you know, it, it feels weird that I'm being asked what you can do to help when, when, when you're, when white people made this problem in the first place. Um, That's like if I like if you're riding a bike and then I come up and I kick you off the bike and I look at I look at you bleeding on the floor. I'm like, oh, shoot. Is there anything I can do to like help you? Right. And to stop this from like happening again? Yeah. Stop kicking me off my bike. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially, like, that's what like systematic racism is. It's like whenever like black people like get up or do anything for themselves, they're like kicked back down. Um, I shared this video on my timeline. Some people saw it about the Tulsa, Oklahoma bombing, uh, the massacre of, of Black Wall Street. It's, it's an example of Black people pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. And that's just one example. Pulled themselves up by their bootstraps like, like Americans are supposed to do. And then we were kicked down. And, and 
and and and reduced to nothing. Right. Um, it's it's like a it's a systematic thing, and 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 that is a piece of history that a lot of people don't know. And so because they don't know that, they think, oh, black people like immigrants come from this country and they make something of themselves. But like African Americans, they've been here for how many hundreds of years and they still haven't made anything of themselves. It must be because that's just that it's their nature to like not be great. It's their nature to be lazy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and and not knowing that history impacts the way that white Americans and other Americans who are influenced, you know, by our culture, it impacts the way that they see us. Even black people from Africa who don't understand like the like our history, they're like, oh, black people are lazy. Nah, bro. Like we've been working at this for a long time. You just got here and you haven't seen it, but like we've constantly been kicked down over and over and over again. So if we can draw attention to that um, and change the hearts of people. Um, just be like, hey, like, just so you know, like these people are actually worth something. Um, I think that that can affect that coupled with doing the 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 hardcore legislation that we need to, or or doing the the tangible things that we need to do now. Those two things together, I think, can just lead to really good change. Um, so that's why I made the video, I, I, and I, I really was disturbed. Um, I felt hopeless, you know, like. I think that's another thing too, where it's like, okay, black people, we're just gonna figure this out. But when I watched that video of George Floyd dying, I was like, no, like we, like here we are again. You know what I mean? Like people are gonna say, oh, I'm so sorry that, that you're going through that. And then three months later, it'll be out of everyone's mind. Um, so I, I truly I, I truly meant what I said when I said there's nothing else that I can do. I mean, there are some things we can do um, for ourselves, but as far as like changing the hearts of the ignorant, um, we've tried for a very long time. And uh, now we need some more allies. Yeah. Um, so. Well, thank you for that explanation um, of the vid. If you guys, um, and friend him if you want to see his video, if you're not his friend, but you can go on his page, Fred Walls. And you did, it was like less than 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, it was less than 10 minutes. Um, and I I was um, I was floored by it. And I, if I'm not mistaken, Fred, I think that video was shared. It was shared so much. And I was trying to get the, um, the shared number Maybe I can have it before we end this session on today. But I was I was floored by the, how many times it was shared and how many individuals were talking about it. Um, even on your page, I, I saw a post telling just thanking you for you know opening up and 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 sharing how you felt because it helped them. Um, it it um, actually helped uh, to open up. Um, people's eyes who were closed or, or closed minded, if you will. Um, and listening to you, they, I mean, it was, it was something simple to me, you know what I'm saying? It was, you just point blank, this is what you can do. You know, um, 1.9 thousand shares. Wow. Did you know that? That's a lot. I don't know if you knew that or not, but yeah. <laughs> I knew it was a lot. I just, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know it was that much. Um, so that just tells you the impact that your uh, nine nine minutes uh, uh, vid had on individuals. You know, a lot of times people say, "Oh, um, I'm glad they said it because that's what I was thinking, but I didn't really want to say it." You know what I mean, or something like that. So mm -hmm. we thank you, um, you know, for for saying it um, and expressing yourself as as you did. Um, let's see here, Facebook Live, you all are blowing up my comment section and I thank you for it. Uh, Linda says his video took on a personality of its own in Georgia. So many people in middle Georgia were inspired by his video. It was so powerful. They started to rethink their position on race and white privilege and look for ways to help eliminate racism. His video touched so many people. Wow. This is what I'm talking about. Um, and you may or may not have heard from 
you know, individuals, maybe directly or not. We're, we're going to read some of these comments and see what else you all have to say on this. Joe says, I like how he touched on not being able to spend time with family. I feel that some families say they want you to be successful, but then get annoyed when you have to work. Oh, he's going back to your uh, starting up your business. When you have to miss family functions to work on your dreams, I actually enjoy Fred not having time for family gatherings because it showed that he was moving forward. All right. All right, so this question that Brandy asked, uh, that I asked before I played the spoken word, um, how does a black entrepreneur in the corporate world handle servicing those who have made it clear they don't value your race as a whole? So we can slide this in to talking about this video too as well. Mm -hmm. what, what is your um, response to that? Um, I would say that it is, so I provide a service, um, but I really do my best to position myself with my clients as a partner um, so that they don't, because here's the thing, at the, I can walk away from any client that I want to. I walked away from a client, not, I didn't walk away from them, but um, when all this stuff started happening, um, a couple of weeks ago, like I had to let go of some clients that were too high stress and too little money clients that I was hanging on to, because it was like, all right, let me just do this. And I may end up working with them again, but just not right now. Cause in this time, like I, I really don't have time for extra stress. Um, and so I, I, I try to make it very clear. It's like, Hey, like in an employer employee relationship, you know, the employer kind of owns the employee. They don't actually do, but like they think they do because they pay them. Um, and for all intents and purposes, you know, employers don't, employees don't want to lose their job. Um, but I, I try to make it very clear with people, not by sitting down and being like, hey, just so you know, you know, don't talk to me a certain way, but just, just um, establishing things from the get go. Like, I am here because you need my expertise and my skills. Um, it's very difficult to find someone like me for my price point, and I'm aware of that, and you're aware of that. Um, so, like, first of all, I'll say I don't think no one, I don't think anyone's ever like disrespected me like on the job or like while I'm working, because um, I do present myself as like somebody who, as as myself, I'm very knowledgeable, very skilled. I got the hardware. Like we're gonna get this done, and I'm friendly. You know what I mean? Like I'm not walking in there with a chip on my shoulder. Um, but a lot of times what it really takes is like, you just sort of like walk up and you can tell from the get go that they don't really think highly of you. And you just like ignore that. And you do what you got to do. You crack a few jokes, you know, and by the end of the session, like they're loving you. Um, and part of that is actually something that I learned from my mom. But like, at the end of the day, like, you know, I'm there to give you a service. You're going to give me money. Um, I don't have to be here. Um, we're going to be friendly and we're going to be cool. Um, and I, I'm, I try to be very careful when I say this. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't always be mad at people for their perception of me because they've been told something. And we as people believe what we're told. So if you've only ever seen people like me in the NBA or in handcuffs, mm. that's not my fault. But I also have to understand this is my opportunity to change this person's outlook on Black people. Um, and a lot of times that's, that's what I go into. That's what I, like, that's, that's the mindset I go into situations like that with. It's like, you know what? You probably, you probably don't hang out with any black people like at all, like, like any friends, like you probably like work with one person that you say like eight words to in a day. Um, so I'm like, your perception of me is probably skewed. And you know what? I'm not going to be mad at you for that. Um, but if it's skewed after today, well, then you got a problem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Uh, Brandy, hopefully that answered your question. It answered it for me. Uh, let's see here. 
Byron Hill. Oh, there you are. <laughs> he says hello, uh -oh. grandson. He says hello, grandson. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, Linda, thank you for the compliment. I appreciate that. You pray for us here, mind, body, and soul. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Brandy says she, she, she cries every time she watches the video. Joe said that video made him weep, and that's a fact. Um, let's see. Antiana, and I hope I pronounced your name right. Thank you for watching. I hate mispronouncing people's names. Okay, let's see. Uh, Brandy, oh, thank you, Brand. Brand put the link for the vid in. Um, if anybody wants to go back and watch this vid that we're talking about that Fred did, the under 10 minute vid that talks uh, simply the title he had on there, How White People Can Help. And we know that we are, all, everybody, we're all dealing with this racism um, that, that especially in the past few weeks, how it has been, you know, magnified and we're all trying to deal with it. Um, Apostle Hunt says, sideline silence is deadly for the oppressed. Okay. It is, it is. And I, and I, comment on it. Yeah, and I, well, I want to say one thing um, for, for anybody watching who feels like racism has gotten worse. We, I know that that's not true. You know that that's not true in that. Racism has not gotten worse, um, but someone actually put it very, one of my friends, one of my white friends, she made it very clear to me the other day. She's like, honestly, if, if we were in the middle of a pandemic, if everyone wasn't at home with like nothing to do, you know what I mean? If we weren't forced to actually sit and think about this, because in our day to day, we have distractions. We have lives, we have jobs, we have events that we have to go to. Like we're go, go, go. If we weren't, if the world was not at a standstill right now, we may not be getting the attention that we're getting. Um, so I just want to put that out there for anyone who thinks that like racism is getting worse. No, it's not. Um, the feelings that I have are feelings that I've been dealing with for a long time. It's just the world has been ignoring it because we've been too busy. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that we don't ignore it when we get busy again. Yeah, that's a simple yet powerful statement. Um, and your friend is accurate um, in, in that respect. It's almost as if we are uh, held captive right now, if you will. Um, and so we see all the, the you know, the vids, we see the TV, we see the news, so we're, on some, we're held captive. So like you said, we're not, you know, busy running around. You may have heard about it or something and you just, you know, in your, you know, doing your thing or whatever, you're going to go on the go. But right now we're like in front of the TV, in front of social media, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. It, it, yeah, so we see it. And I, I agree with you. I hope that when we become busy again, that, you know, this just doesn't fall to the side. Mm -hmm. um, prayerfully, this is, you know, there's a difference that we can make with this, um, which is why, you know, uh, those who are out there uh, peacefully protesting, I, I applaud and appreciate them. Um, uh, everybody can do that. Everybody don't do it. But I, I applaud and appreciate those who are, uh, peacefully protesting. Um, you all know my position. I'm not into the looting and I'm not condoning looting. And I'll say that again, over and over again, but that, that's just me. Um, let's see, Buddy Gill says, this dialogue reminds me of a book I read. The title of the book was, Makes Me Wanna Holler. Oh, uh oh, okay. All right. I can see if- uh, Need to get that book. That. Yeah, you probably do. Um, Carla says, that's how I feel. I don't mind being people's first. I don't take it personally. Oh, okay. Um, probably in reference to your response to Brandy's question. All right. Yeah. That's good, Carla. Thank you. Um, uh, Marvin says, uh, much respect, Fred. Keep up the good work, bro. Uh, great mindset. Thanks, Myron. Um, uh, Pastor Cece says, great point. When the people behind the policies are touched, the policies will change. Yeah, um, as you were as you were talking, I'm I'm a kind of piggyback off of that, uh, Pastor Cece. As you were talking on your vid, and you were saying that uh, individuals were asking you, "What can I do?" I'm sorry, white people were asking you, "What can I do?" Is there anything I can do? And I'm sitting here, I'm listening at this vid. I'm like, okay, what is he gonna tell them? What can they do? You know, <laughs> I'm just like, you know, I'm like sitting there just listening, waiting. And then when you came out with that, and I was like, 
oh, okay, yeah, that's a that's a very good point um, because I think you do need to get to you know the heart. And then you broke it down again too. You were saying that you know um, um, those that started you know this racism. We need to we need to you need to get to them. And so again, like you said, if you know somebody that's racist, if you're white, know somebody that's white and racist, try to get their mindset to change. You have to you have to get that mindset to change to even begin to even look for change, mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if you will, uh, maybe sounding redundant what I just said, but it, it's accurate. You have to get to um, you have to get to the core uh, when, when you're dealing with things. Um, let's see. Apostle Hunt has a question. Did you have any idea that your message to our white friends would catch on like it did? You say that one more time. Okay, sure. He says, uh, Apostle Hunt says, did you have any idea that your message to your or our white friends would catch on like it did? Um, no. Really? No, I, 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 I made the video because honestly, um, I, I, I wanted to like reach my immediate circle. Like, I, I feel like what I can do is like reach out to people who know me and I, and that I, and I know them um, and just like leave this here. Um, and hopefully they will have conversations with people. I, and honestly, like I do video production, you know what I mean? Like it, it, it might seem funny that like somebody who does video production, like made this like low quality cell phone video, like selfie video just walking around. But, like I learned in marketing that like people respond more to videos when they can see a face than when they see a photo of a place or some words or an animation. That's just like, like the numbers prove it. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna make a video with my face on it. People who know me are gonna see me and I'm just gonna talk to them. Um, they'll respond to it. I had no, I have absolutely no clue that it was gonna catch on the way that it did. Wow. I'm grateful, I'm very grateful, but I had absolutely no clue. <laughs> I, and I can almost tell you why it caught on. And I think you 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 said it without realizing it. You could have done a high quality video, but you said, I'm just gonna sit and I'm gonna talk. People respond better to you when you are that, you know, you have that one-on-one -on -one with them or when they feel like they have your attention or you have their attention, vice versa, you know? And, you know, and okay, I can understand him. I mean, you're not all behind the big, you know, scenery and this is Fred Walls coming yeah. across whatever and you know <laughs> you know all dramatic and everything. Yeah. But they're able they were able to hear your heart. They were able to hear what was in your brain, your mind, your thoughts, if you will. Um so they it, it, it was almost as if they were in the room with you. I believe that's why it caught on so yeah and, and they were able to to understand and, and relate to you. Um, let's see, I see you, Pastor Rick. Thank you so much for joining us on today. Um, if you guys are just not joining, we're talking to Fred Walls, Fred Walls Media. And we're talking today, uh, we've talked about a few things. We talked about his business, his media business, uh, which by the way, I am, I, am, um, I, am I, I appreciate how you named your business after yourself. Um, because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, that was smart. That was smart. You know, nobody can duplicate it. There's only one Fred Walls. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I just want to throw that in there. But anyway, we've been talking about his business. We've been talking about uh, him as an entrepreneur, uh, as a millennial as well. And now we're talking um, about uh, this this uh, famous vid that he's made uh, in the midst of what we're dealing with, with this uh, systemic racism, um, dealing with, you know, the latest, unfortunately, uh, with uh, Mr. Floyd and, and others who have lost their lives. Uh, to law enforcement and uh, just senselessly, um, you know, he he's he's been out there on the lines, <laughs> uh, 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 protesting uh, as well, peacefully protesting. I've seen him, um, and you know, expressing how he feels about you know being a young black man um, and living in this time and dealing with this this uh, constant situation over and over and over again. Um, so he actually did a video entitled How White People Can Help. So that's what we're talking about right now. And so you may see comments and questions if you're just not joining us on, on that, um, in, in that respect. 
Um, let's see, Linda says, I am sure you know my generation was always careful who we talked to because we knew there will be repercussions if we said the wrong thing to the wrong person. I am glad they speak openly now. This young man is so deep. And, and um, Linda Jane, thank you for, for, for saying that um, because you're, you're right. We, uh, and she is a little bit older than I am, but also in my generation too. Um, but yeah, we had to be careful who we talked to. We couldn't like come out and say, okay, white people, this is what you need to do, you know, or whatever, you know. Um, they weren't able to say that. Some couldn't say it, but we applaud you for doing it. We just And didn't. you know, you, I, I, to, to speak to that, one of the, the things that sort of inspired me to, to speak as well is that I think that um, in addition to what we're talking about, about how like the whole world has to, is, is being held hostage, you know, by COVID-19. Um, when I saw the George Floyd video, I was terrified, but it was like the same emotion that I've had every time I've seen a black man die on camera. Um, this was just like the latest one. Right after I saw that, I just stayed up and I was on the internet. Uh, like maybe 20 minutes later, I saw Amy Cooper's video. And Amy Cooper is the, the woman who threatened the man to call the police on the man. The same um, day. Huh? It was the same day. Oh, was it the same day? Yeah, hers was that's, early in the afternoon and his was in the evening. That's crazy. That see, that's crazy. So so I saw that video and it was it was uh for those who haven't seen it, Amy Cooper was out walking her dog without a leash, which you're not supposed to do. This black man was out bird watching and he was like, Hey, can you please put your dog on the leash? Because he's scaring away the birds. And they got into this whole thing and she got really upset and he started recording her. And she's like, if you don't put away your phone, I'm gonna call the police and tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. And in that moment, and she did it and he got, and he recorded it. And he, and I was so happy when I saw that video because that was a very disgusting thing. But like, Annette, you and I both know that that is not new. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, I, I'm instantly reminded of Emmett Till when I think about that. Yeah. And so like, a lot of people did not understand the concept that a, that a white woman could threaten a black man's life that way. Yeah. A lot of people just didn't understand that. But when they saw that video, they were like, either they didn't understand or they did understand and they were pretending like they didn't. Mm -hmm. um, so for a lot of people, it was like, oh, like this is more, this is more than just the police killing black people. You know what I mean? This is more, this is more than just a old white man thing. You know what I'm saying? A lot of my uh, white friends who are females, I think saw that video and they were kind of like, a lot of them were asking themselves the question, how am I like Amy Cooper? Mm. Like this isn't just something that old white men do to black men. This is something that we're all like guilty of, even if we don't realize. And so I think the reason I got happy when I saw that video is because it was kind of like we were able to, I don't know, like if you've seen like old Scooby-Doo cartoons, where like at the end, they're like, all right, let's see who's who's behind the mask and they yeah. pull the mask off, you know what I mean? And and for me, it was like that. It was like, okay, so let's see who else is contributing to the oppression and murder of black men. <gasps> White women, like, like for the first time, the whole country was like, what? Like, we thought you loved black men. And it was just like a, it was relatable to like more people and people were able to see, oh, like the normal, like everyday innocent woman who's walking her dog mm -hmm. also like contrib can contribute to my friend's death. Mm -hmm. um, and I, in a lot of ways are like similar to her. Um, and so I think that that video coming out the same time as George Floyd opened a lot of people's, either opened their mind or it, it forced them to stop ignoring like that additional fact um and i think that also like mobilized them and like want to see some change uh or like want to change that about themselves and change that about like their relatives mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah that's a good point um and another thing to keep in mind uh i forgot it was some famous person i don't know, i can't remember who it was i don't know why i want to say common somebody said that i mean just like you said these things have been happening but it's just now it's being reported it's just, you know, mm -hmm. everybody sees it now. Um, and, and, and so it, it, it's not a secret anymore, if you will. 
um, and, and people's eyes are, are definitely being open to what is actually going on. Um, let's see. Oh, Apostle Laguerre, you have written a book. Why, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, okay, let's see. Let me see if I can skim through this a little bit. Oh, yeah, you, you've written a message here. Uh, Joseph August Athenor Furman, better known as simply Athenor Furman, was a Haitian anthropologist. Okay, so you're giving us a lot of history here. All right. Um, my goodness, Apostle Laguerre, we're going to have to have you on, on a show or something. Um, let's see. Fred, Wall, Fred Walls was raised right. That's what Buddy Gill says. Michelle Thomas, I see you on. Thanks for watching. Karen says, know when to hold them and know when to fold them. <laughs> uh, if you didn't know my value, you better learn it. And I think some of them are grabbing some of your, your quotes from when you were talking. And uh, this is, yeah, this is maturity and wisdom that we're hearing, Joe. Uh, Nikki is on your aunt. Thanks for watching. We appreciate you. Uh, Pastor Marshall says, uh, Mr. Fred Walls, I just love, love your personality and wisdom. You're, oh, indomitable young man. Love it. It's always has been there. It always has been there is what Karen said. It has just been televised and now we're forced to deal with it because we are still. Yeah, I, I agree. We were just saying that Norma, we see you on God bless you. Um, and Linda says here, I love my friend Jeannie Webb Hodges. She is watching with me and has been a true friend for over four decades. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you Jeannie for watching. Thank you for watching with uh, Linda Bivens. We appreciate you on today. Byron Hill says, I have for a long time thought that you were a young man before your time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Grandpa. He says, uh, you have always impressed me with your thought process and insight for one so young. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed too. Even though you make me laugh, Fred, I, I'm thoroughly impressed um, with what you share with us. He said if he knew it was going to go viral, he would have gotten it. <laughs> what he said? I'm sorry, Brandy says. He said if he knew it was going to go viral, he would have gotten a haircut first. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, man, why did that have to be? The one time I cannot get a haircut is the one time everybody is going to find out who I am. I was just, I encourage everybody to go through my profile photos and just just look at what I look like when my hair is cut. Is just so you know, this isn't. I, I don't just live like this. Although I might now because I don't care anymore. But <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> but you know what? Though I mean, we all understand. We we've been quarantined, so we knew the barber shops were closed. <laughs> so we understand. Again, we were listening to your heart, right? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the thought that counts. That's not the haircut. Fact. That's right. Not the fade. Uh, exactly, not the fade. Uh, someone says, Imatel all over again. Uh, this is happening all the time. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Karen says this behavior has been has definitely been taught. The Scooby-Doo is spot on. Yeah, that was a very good point. Uh, okay, Joe says, social media has made racism a part of white society's lives. Hmm. So now many are becoming aware for the first time, or now they are forced to deal with it. And I always say, if I can add to that, Joe, that, you know, a lot of times people, they understand, they may, some may know what's actually going on or really realize it, but they don't want to own up to it. And they don't want to say, oh yeah, that's happening because you know what, you know what will happen when they say, oh yeah, this is happening. Then they're forced to deal with it. Just like you said, you have to deal mm -hmm. with it at that point because it's in your face. So why not just say, oh, I ain't nothing to that or whatever, or mm -hmm. that's just them saying something all over again they're just running off at the mouth or whatever no mm -hmm. it's actually happening and we have to deal with it you have to deal with it everybody has to deal with it um so thank you for that comment uh joe seth says what saddens me is that while it is true that now these things are recorded but this information has never been far out of reach hmm. sadly many in the white community have just been lazy and naive wow that was deep, Seth. Thank you. Mm. Uh, Jeannie says, uh, uh, Fred, we are thankful for you and and our girls. Oh, okay. I think that's what you're saying. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, Alyssa says, always had some haircut and not. All right. Whoa, Lou. They're really giving you compliments here. My goodness. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> well, thank you. 
<laughs> Let's see any other comments down through here. I, I appreciate you guys. Let's see. Brandy says, go through his profile pics. He's actually a very presentable and handsome man. <laughs> Despite what you see. Despite what you see. Despite but we were listening to the message. We, we can see the handsome. We can see the handsome man. And he was, wait a minute, what role did you play in um, in Annie that I saw you in? What was what was the name of your? Is yeah, I was uh, I was Daddy Warbucks. Warbucks, I, I knew Warbucks, Warbucks. was the top of my tongue. <laughs> yeah, and I definitely did not have this much hair. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. Uh, but okay, uh, Mr. Warbucks, no, I'm just kidding, Mr. Walls. Let's see, uh, I have, make sure I have uh, asked all my questions. Now, okay, someone already asked if you think that it would um, have that much of an impact on on, on white people, um, you know, doing that video. But I want to ask you, okay, we asked about the impact, but do you think that many will actually listen to you, many white people will actually listen to you and actually do it um, mm -hmm. and talk with some people or... Or, or what have you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I kind of look at it as a as a numbers game, and I don't want to say that I don't have faith in humanity, but let's let's be real. How many of us say that we're going to do a diet or start working out, and then we just don't do it? We're well intentioned when we start, um, but once it is, once you're no longer excited about it, you know, once this is no longer a trend, how many people will stick with it? So. I, I mean, just from from a marketing perspective, I always think, okay, if a hundred people see this, let's assume that ten people are going to take it seriously, and that's a very like that that's probably like a conservative amount. You know what I mean? I'm hoping more than more than uh, ten out of a hundred will will take action, but I'm thinking like, okay, cool. Like, if if a thousand people see this, a hundred people will take action. If five thousand people see this, five hundred people will take action and so on and so forth. So uh, all that to say that I, I, I want everybody to take action that watches the video, um, but just recognizing life is kind of a numbers game. Um, I don't think that, I don't wanna say I don't think that, I don't wanna speak that into existence. I hope everyone takes action, um, but just recognizing that some people may not. Um, and you know, we hope that the actions of the people that do take action make up for it. You know what I'm saying? I, I've heard some people who are like, I'm not going to convert one racist white person, but two. And I was like, go ahead on. Some people have said, I'm going to do five. You know what I'm saying? So like, if you want to make up for the people who aren't taking any action, that'd be great. Um, I think what's most important is that we do take action just on a large scale. Because like, if I, if I change one person's heart, that one person is going to change someone else's heart. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, so that's the hope. So being okay. realistic, but also being optimistic. Okay. Um, I, and I'll say this, um, you know, it's been said down through the comments and everything, and I'm sure even, um, you know, on your own wall regarding it, you're, you're onto something when, when you did the video, definitely. I, I'm, I'm looking around, matter of fact, I was just looking on Good Morning America this, uh, was it Good Morning? Yeah, Good Morning America this morning, and a former um NFL player he has um just created this uh series if you will I don't know if it's going to be like a tv series or something where um he's just going to sit down basically and talk about racism and he, he entitles it a conversation with a black man just mm -hmm. simple as that and so you know he's I mean impassionate you know about how you know he feels as a black man and, and, you know, himself and then seeing what's going on and how it's affecting everyone. And he, I think his, his the first show, he was talking with uh, Matthew Conaghy, the actor. And they were really, you know, just point blank, you know, just ask, you know, he was asking them questions. He was said, okay, well, how can I as a white person, you know, you know, basically like the people were asking, mm -hmm. how can I do this? Or, or should I avoid certain things or saying certain things or, or doing certain things? Um, and he, you know, he laid it out just like you did. Um, so that's why I said, I think you're onto something with that. I mean, I don't know if you are planning to do more videos or whatever, or, or this particular video will stand, um, you know, or what have you, but it is, 
we're at, we're at a time now where the dialogue is opening up. And I think that that is definitely the starting point. You can't, and, and I, um, now one of my models is uh, I always ask questions. And if you don't really sit down and tell, how are you gonna know what's on somebody's mind? You have to have that dialogue. I need to let you know that when you uh, hit my arm the other day that it hurt. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I, I need you to understand and know you know, my position where I am. So I, I appreciate, you know, uh, the various, you know, platforms that are, you know, seem like it's, it's opening up now, this, this dialogue for us to be able to comfortably um, um, sit down and talk about what's on our mind. Because again, too many times we've held it in, we haven't said much, we've taken this and we've taken that. Um, but I think the, the open dialogue is definitely, definitely um, the starting point. Um, yeah, I would agree. I would agree. And I would even say um, without dialogue, I mean, that's that's a classic, you know, it, I, we'll just use, you know, relationships for an example. You know, if, if you and your partner aren't communicating, you know, it's just not going to work. You're not, you're not going to know there are some times where we think someone should know something. It's like, oh, I shouldn't have to tell you this. You should know. You know what I mean? But it's like, okay, well, the reality of the situation is that I don't. Right. So whether I should or not is a debate for another time. Uh, if we want different results, you need to be communicating to me the things that you think I should know. Mm -hmm. And I would, um, I would call on... Racism impacts more than just black and white people, right? Yes. Um, that's that's the majority of the dialogue that we're having. Um, but you know, other marginalized groups, um, you know, you know, they 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 have things that they have to deal with as well. Um, for the sake of simplicity, like I would call on uh, white people to ask more questions. Here's the thing: you're going to get some things wrong you're going to make a mistake. You're going to piss somebody, sorry, you're going to upset someone. That's, that's, that's life, you know what I mean? I, I, if we go through, if we try to deal with racism in the sense that like we don't want to make any mistakes, it's good to be kind to others, but also understand that like you're gonna make some mistakes and that's okay, you know what I'm saying? Like it's not gonna be the end of the world if someone is upset with you, uh, especially because like they'll probably move on and no longer be upset with you in the, in the future. Just say you made a mistake and move on. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I, so I would call on white people to accept the fact that they will make mistakes. This isn't an easy thing. Um, you're going to have to feel some, you're, you're going to have to feel some shame, not because we're trying to shame you, but like history is is very shameful. And the reality that we live in today, it's, it's pretty shameful. You know what I'm saying? And those are things that like you're going to have to come to terms with. But I don't want you to feel shame just to feel shame. Mm -hmm. I want you to feel shame because I want that shame to to move you to change the situation. You know what I'm saying? Our feelings, our feelings that we think are bad can often be what we need for something good. You know, anxiety, you know, we think of anxiety as a bad thing, but like my anxiety is going to like lead me to like get my deadlines, you know, meet all my deadlines for all my clients. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not a bad thing if it's just literally a notification trying to tell you that something needs to be fixed. So don't be afraid to feel shame. Don't be afraid to feel wrong. Um, obviously use your discretion, but don't, don't, be, don't feel afraid to be attacked. Um, Cause those are just, I think those are like necessary things. So that's, that's, my, that's my call to white people. My, my challenge for black people, for black folks um, is to as much as you can be patient and open to having dialogue with white people who genuinely want to learn. Mm. Because I think that I've had a lot of people, a lot of white folks reach out to me just because they're like, I literally have no clue about history, about the things that, like I, about what I should say, what I shouldn't. I can't, ev everyone is ignorant until the day that they're not. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I can't get mad at you for what you don't know. 
because it's not your fault you don't know it. The system has changed your history books. The system has told you this is something to ignore. Your parents have been feeding you certain information. And so like, I can't get mad at you for not knowing something. There's a difference between ignorance and like willful ignorance. Now, now if, if you know the information's out there and you're just refusing to learn, okay, I can be mad at you for that. But yeah. if, 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 if a white person is coming to you and they want to engage in dialogue because they want to know, because they need to learn in order for, in order for us to move past this, you know, if we want to move into a, a post-racist society, we have to have those, those conversations. And that means that you, I know black people, we are tired. I know that right now we're exhausted. I know we don't feel like having these conversations. I know we feel like we shouldn't have to say certain things, but the reality of the situation is there are things that they don't know. And I know it shouldn't be our job to educate them, but guess what? If we don't do it, then we stay where we are. You know what I'm saying? So, that, so that's my challenge to black folks is to be more patient, to be more willing to engage in conversations. If you have to take a break, give yourself, you know, let recharge your batteries, do that. But like, please don't shy away from having these conversations because if a white person is trying to make progress and trying to move us toward a better society, we have to, we have to, we have to aid them. We have to be, we're allies in this fight. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love it. That was, that's excellent advice. That's excellent advice. That's wisdom too. That is definitely wisdom. Um, because unfortunately, um, you may be saying, okay, here's what you all can do as white people, but then, you know, are we willing to even share with them what to do? Or mm -hmm. are we doing our part as, as, as black people? Um, so thank you for that. Um, I, I, I think that that is, um, you know, something that we definitely need to take in ourselves. Um, it's, it's, it's just so many factors, there's so many layers to, you know, everything that we're dealing with right now, but um, you've given us some insight. And I told you guys he was going to do that today. I told you he was going to enlighten you. I told you he was going to share some stuff with you. This is an intelligent man. And I know we keep saying this over and over again, but it's true though, Fred. We're not just saying this, you know, about you, you know, just to, you know, compliment you or whatever, or, you know, or what have you. But it's it, it's the truth, and I well I can I can speak for myself though. If it wasn't true, I wouldn't say it. So you can know that about Annette. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Sure. Um, let me read some more comments before we get out of here because we are wrapping up on today. Um, if you're just not joining us, I'm sorry. You're gonna have to go back and uh, rewind and listen to the entire session on today. Some great stuff that was shared. Uh, let's see. Brandy says once Black Lives Matter is no longer trending will we still matter and she's talking about your quote uh Alyssa says i've seen some complete turnarounds and i also struggle with faith in the human race but i have been very encouraged this past week eyes can be opened open minds can be changed open being the key Alyssa, thank you for that that's a beautiful comment thank you for that um, Dr. Hill, did I even say your name? Yes, she is on. She says, hello, favorite people. I, I have to call Dr. Hill's name because she would get me if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for joining us. I, I know you're busy too as well, but I appreciate it. Um, oh, my cousin Linda Jean says, we can learn so much from this young man. So much wisdom. He needs to write a book or be, <laughs> or be on the speaker circuit. I agree. I can I can like that or love that a thousand times. I agree with that comment. Um, let's see. Linda says, I told him that he sounds exactly like Brandy. Put them in a room and close the door. <laughs> Let them have a conversation. And I promise you, you will not be able to tell who is talking, Brandy or Fred. Did I say all that at the beginning? I said all that at the beginning, did I? Yeah. See? Yeah. See, somebody else agrees with me. Um, uh, Linda Bivens also says, several people I know have already started taking action. One created a post asking, are you a racist? And put it on his Facebook, Facebook page. Um, I assume this person was probably white. Another friend saw the video and was inspired uh, to lead a protest this past weekend to remove a Confederate statue in the downtown area. I'm assuming this is Georgia, Linda. Wow. Is that what we're referring to? And it also says uh, she posted a document showing the ad that Negroes were sold at that exact 
location. This was all inspired by his video. I think I'm about to cry. Okay. And this <laughs> says here, most of the protesters were white people. I love it. Wow. Fred, you are making a difference. That nine That's minute this guy. video is making a difference. Not just here in Illinois where we are, but all over. And this is what we want to happen. This is what we want to happen, you know, and, and, and this is to all of us. We do what we can, whether it's a, 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 a video like Fred did or going out to peacefully protest or making sign or what have you, we have to do our part. And don't think that whatever you do is too small of a part, okay? Because a lot of times that will hinder us and that will, uh, mm, now that's not big enough. And then you won't do anything. So then we're back to square one. No, let's do what we can to make a difference, you know, as a people. And, you know, watch, watch the Lord work. Do you want to give us some parting words on today? I think I'll just add to what you just said. Uh, no action is too small. I, I, I am trying to encourage people as much as I can. Um, my idea of converting one racist white person, for some people that's huge, for some people they feel like that's too small, but like, the I've said this to a couple of people. The actions, the 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 many actions of a few people lead to great change. You know what I'm saying? Like if a million people do something small, a million small things makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, and so I would just to echo exactly what you just said. Like, what you're doing, it may seem small, but guess what? Like, there's a hundred other people, a thousand, a million other people doing small things and making this fight with and doing this fight with you and and your your efforts joined with theirs um they're going to lead to something big yeah yeah i love it i love it uh dr hill says and we will keep brandon covered in prayer thank you dr hill for that prayer is always needed um you know for all of us but that that's spoken like a true grandmother. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my that's my that's my Ganny. Call her Ganny. Okay. Gany with, <laughs> with no R, just Ganny. Just Ganny. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you again so much for your time on today. Um, we have gleaned from you. We have learned from you, um, and we have appreciated uh, you being transparent and coming on and talking about uh, you, your business. Uh, your position and uh, society and also what we're dealing with um, on racism. So thank you so, so much uh, for taking time out on today. Uh, we appreciate it. And this is not going to be your last time coming back on Mind, Body, and Soul, but but thanks for coming to get caught in the net. <laughs> of, course, of course. And thank you for having me. Honestly, it's it's a huge, it's a pleasure. It's an honor. Um, I appreciate you thinking about me. And I, yeah, I hope the conversation can continue um, outside of outside of today. Yes. Definitely. Okay. Well, wonderful. All right, guys. And I want to thank all of you for joining us on today, for sharing, for tagging. Um, you guys are still throwing up uh, comments and, and hearts and everything on today, but I appreciate you. Um, I always say I, I, if it weren't for you all, I would be talking to myself every week. So I thank you for supporting my body and soul on a weekly basis. You know, we're coming up on seven years in a few months. We'll be seven years old. Oh, and you it. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited about it. I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, oh my God, seven years. But I, I thank God for this platform, for this opportunity to uh, highlight individuals, but then also to talk about what's on our mind. And that, that's the whole purpose of Mind, Body, and Soul. We talk about the psychological, we talk about the spiritual aspect, and people don't realize it encompasses everything in your life. <laughs> those, two, those two areas encompass everything in your life. So um, I thank you guys. And oh my goodness, that's another book somebody wrote. I'll, I'll go back and look at all the comments 